It's a solo project okay. in which I play all the parts, essentially lead, I play bass synth, I play a Wurlitzer generally, so I play lead and chords, and I control a drum machine, so it's mainly using all of analog equipment and uh, older hardware, and I sing, so a lot of things to coordinate at the same time, and I don't think many other people work in that way, and it's been difficult to train myself to work that way, but it's been really also very rewarding, and I enjoy it a lot, so... You started um, four years ago? Yes, the project started four years ago. Um, I've always wanted to play music since I was a small child and I had sang in choirs and done different things, but I didn't know an instrument. And finally, I had borrowed a friend's keyboard and sort of fell in love with the sound. It was a Wurlitzer EP electronic piano. And I decided that I loved how it sounded and wanted to teach myself how to play it. Uh, maybe it's a very private question, but uh, I wonder, who are you? How old am I? 27. Yeah. 27, yeah. okay. That Unilever uh, uh, is um, a newspaper which focus on spiritual matters, spiritual topics. So I would like to know, uh, could you introduce the philosophical and spiritual matters which, which influence your, your life? Sure. Um, I'm primarily influenced, there's a few genres of music that I find really influential. Um, primar primarily early industrial music, just because of the quality of sound. Um, There's a lot of collage elements and early kind of rock and roll elements, but also experimental elements. So I think that that is a really interesting time in music. Nobody was trying to make music that was marketable. They were just really focusing on sound, but it was not too obscure or intellectual that it wanted to be seen in an academic way. It was still very social and accessible. Um, For the public. Can okay, you mean it's uh, Throbbing Gristle? Or yeah, or? Uh, Cabaret yes. Voltaire, Throbbing Gristle. Um, I also really like Alan Vega and Martin Red. Um, I'm also influenced by sort of the darkness of a lot of metal and a lot of rap. I kind of like dark, melancholy music. I like music that um, exceeds sort of standard setups. I'm not really into guitar, bass, and drums. Which your favorite writer? My favorite writer is oh. definitely J.G. Ballard. Okay. And I think he has about 30-something books, and I've read maybe 15, which is... I'm getting there slowly. And I think a lot of um, musicians were influenced by him, but often maybe read one or two books, and I kind of can't get enough because his... He writes in this kind of hyper-realistic way, but the landscapes are so his own imagination, and I, he's really given me the sense of empowerment to write about whatever I want to and not feel that there are any type of restrictions with where I can take my imagination. I could feel uh, it, uh, deeply embedded in your heart and your spirit. <laughs> okay. How do you express all this um, influence, spiritual and uh, artistic and uh, uh, theoretical influences in your life? How do you mix it and express it through your work? Um, I don't have my new stuff released, so it, it's hard for that to be seen. But the new work, I have about 18 new songs that really are based around certain political themes, but in imaginative ways, not really in self-righteous ways. Um, and also character roles. I like sort of analyzing American archetypes and writing songs about those, sort of exposing some of those potential roles. Um, and then in terms of sound, sound is very political. There's, I think good songs kind of are accessible on all levels. You cannot know anything about the history and still like the song. You could just listen to it and not know anything like the song. Or you could really dig deep into the layers and think about the history of what each piece of equipment, you know, where it came from, how it's made, how the person's process, what they're using. Um, 
by me kind of doing all these things by myself and working with older equipment, I'm doing things the hard way. It's really a harder way. Everyone says, why don't you just run it off the set off a computer? And it's not what the project is about. It's really about kind of training myself and having a, a hard work ethic. Um, it's sort of countering a, a sort of an American ideal of laziness and having things be just easily accessible at your fingertips. And I kind of said, fuck it, I'm going to make it really hard. <laughs> Where do you want to carry your public? I think I like it being in a gray area. <laughs> Where I don't really want to make straight lace. I want to make some dance music, and I want to make just some sort of ballads and sort of more tropical sounding songs, um, but I don't want it to get stuck in any type of box or stereotype, and I want there to be this sort of freedom of different associations that can be made with the sound, but not in a way that's just like, now we're adding crazy sound, you know, some people just sample and add a bunch of stuff, and then it's this whole mix up of, of sounds that are coming from everywhere and don't make sense and I find that overwhelming but I kind of like it in this gray area where it's, where it's not so easy to say that this is exactly the spiritual uh, barrier I do not have the faith but I am very a very strong moral, and I think that those things exist in all things. So, uh, being a good person that works very hard, and I care a lot about um, care a lot. I think that humans are very wasteful. <laughs> I yeah. think a lot. That's my own psychology. It's very anti how wasteful we are, and I, I, I like to be as resourceful as possible. And I mean, there's certain things through my songs that I'm really going to try to subtly encourage in human characters that they you know, develop or reflect upon, but not in an aggressive way. All right, thanks a lot, and Unity Bear, uh, wish you a very successful set. Thank you. Uh, okay, thanks a lot, and I guess you need to have a rest. Yeah, you're <laughs> eat some food. You're a bit exhausted. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.